Nick from Bridge City Sessions. Uh, our guest today is F Con from Seattle, Washington. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you doing? Hey, good Nick. to see you. Good to see you. Uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves and uh, let us know what you do in the band. My name is Kevin White, lead singer. Uh, I'm Trevor. I play bass. What is brother play drums? I'm Dylan. I play guitar and join Zoom chats by myself instead of. And a group of other people. <laughs> You're such a loner. Where's the dog? He's here. He's around here somewhere. He's probably sleeping. Yeah, good dog. So what have you guys been up to? Well, uh, Brett and I have been laid off since like March. Uh, just mostly just trying to stay positive and sane and uh, try to be as creative as possible. Uh, you know, we can't necessarily like have like full band practice right now so we're just trying to figure out different outlets to you know help support the music community in any way possible yeah right on do you guys uh like jam acoustically or you know have you been doing any writing is there any sort of uh new stuff go in the works uh since quarantine go ahead dylan my bad what? Oh, it's it's very hard to try to get together and write music, you know, because we're trying to stay socially distant as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and like the rehearsal space that we have is so small, there's just like no way that we can, in good conscience, like try to do something like that, you know. Absolutely. Or it's a little bit different for the other guys because they live together, you know, but I just have to basically just try to write guitar parts and then record them and then try to send them over if I find the time to make any, you know? Absolutely. Right on. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I was just curious because FCON has been like a name that I've seen around forever, but I never really asked you, what, what is the history behind the name FCON? Like, what does that, what does that mean? Well, the, the, the history, the history behind the name, uh, point blank, you know, it's, 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 it's a reflection of, of, of society and police brutality. So FCON, okay. F-C-O-N, straight up stands for four cops, one nigga. And it's really, when you look at from Trayvon Martin to uh -huh. Michael Brown to Eric Gardner to any situation you see these days with, with, with the police and minorities of any group, uh, it's normally just uh, – more than just one police officer there. It's usually like a four-on-one type situation. That can also apply to, you know, daily life, such as, you know, you have to take care of your bills, your your mortgage, uh, your, you know, all sorts of like payments that just four, four to one odds at all times. So that's just sort of like what it applies to. Okay. I back it. I just, I've seen that name forever and I have just never asked anybody and I just thought, you know, might as well, you know figure out what's oh, no, uh, yeah um so there's been like a few lineup changes over the years are who's the original members in fcon it used to be a five piece <clears throat> before i was in the band uh <clears throat> we had our buddy tom playing drums he came from a old acoustic punk rock band that trevor and i used to play together and uh yeah, you know, um, we used to have a second guitar player as well. Yeah, there's a second guitar player, our buddy Kevo. He moved back to Olympia. Uh, Mike Barney played in a band with the original drummer Tom uh, before Trevor, you know, came on board. That's who was jamming on bass with us. But, uh, so at this point, yeah, uh, Dylan and I are the original members, but Brett's, like, been around there for probably, like, as long. Because mm -hmm. I think Tom was, like, like show. Like three or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then Trevor's like been around for two, three years. Some yeah, yeah. three, no. four. I don't remember. Yeah. We've been a band for like six years now. Yeah. Oh. The drummer quit and I still had these guys booked for shows I needed them to play. So I had to, you know, learn the drums and make sure that they stayed on the bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Did you did you start playing drums like for this band or like like Yeah, totally. You... I mean all the songs were written in my basement, so once the old drummer bounces, you know, I, I, ha I had a step ahead on picking it all up because I, you know, was there when all the songs were being written in the first place. But yeah, I started playing drums, um, specifically being this band. 
Wow. It was crazy because uh, I remember when you came in and did your session, I was just like, I'm just so used to seeing you on guitar and burn that just to like see you back there doing that and just like, yeah, I just. It goes yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was just, uh, it's it's a new thing uh, for for me to see and it's pretty interesting. So I was just kind of curious uh, what made you want to start playing drums? Uh, I just wanted to be a drummer, so I'd stop, have, I'd stop having to answer all the questions all the time. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. I just, I, I had the kit, you know, downstairs for like people to jam on touring bands to play in the basement to use or whatever. So, I mean, it was always there and I like dicked around, you know, for, I don't know, a couple of years and like didn't take it seriously until I had an opportunity to join a band. So, uh, I don't know, just the, the whole, the whole band formed pretty organically, you know, like Trevor never been in like a band other than our acoustic group. Kevin never been in a band. I think it was Dylan's first punk band, first band I ever played drums in. So, so yeah, it, it all came together pretty naturally. Absolutely. Plus just like all of our different influences, like, you know, uh, we're all in like nineties, epitaph, punk rock, and then like, you know, hardcore punk and metal and, all, I think the thing that ties us all together is our, all our mutual love of hip hop. So, yeah, that's cool. So, so you guys have a, a self-titled release. Is that uh, like your like most recent thing? Is like this uh, self-titled release? Or, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, our most recent. It's because the only thing. It is, it is the only, thing that the only official with. yeah release. Gotcha. And uh, so that was released on Tiny Dragon. Correct. All right. And uh, so you recorded uh, with Tony. Uh, what studio is that out of? Is that like at his house or? Was it, was I want to have bastards like down in the south end. And uh, I mean, we just went with him because I've been recording with Tony Fantosi since I was like 17 years old. Mm -hmm. My original band, you know, uh, he came from Rat City Ruckus and was always kind of a inspiration to us and just you know local that we looked up to so it was kind of no-brainer when we we're trying to decide who to go go through the record yeah shout out to tony man yeah tony fantosi yeah, he does, uh, does he have like a name for his studio or is it yeah, just one and a half bastards one and a half bastards yeah it's, it, we recorded basically he, he he lives in like a like an apartment complex that's like a it's like an artist space it's like an yeah, artist yeah. space yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. there's like a jam room that you know you can pencil in time to like yeah. use for whatever and uh he just hauls his all his recording stuff down there and sets mm -hmm. it up and we go for it that's cool did you guys just bang it out in like a weekend or did you guys take your yeah, time on it? Or? Two, maybe I think it was like two weekends. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, and then like, you know, I don't even remember. we did it fast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean well, it was, it was like probably like a weekend for you and Dylan, like do your parts or like a weekend for me to do my parts. And then like, a we mix it, and, all that shit and like right the mixing and matching was like one or two sessions. Yeah. yeah. So, well, uh, <laughs> you are now. So, uh, Dylan, um, you uh, you started your own screen printing business in like the last like year, uh, like two years, I want to say, or maybe more. I don't know. Time flies, but uh, how's that been going? You know, it's fun. Yeah, you stay you busy. Know, like, I mean, no, well, I mean, coronavirus. You know, all this shit. It sucks. I mean. Not as bad as like people that you know work in bars and stuff get laid off, but the orders, at least for me, I don't know about you, but it's been light for sure. Oh yeah, well, I mean, the epidemic has has hurt a ton of people in a lot of ways, but uh, just like in general, you know, the um, it seems like we work with a lot of the same, you know, familiar bands and. Uh, yeah, it's been cool. I was curious. So the name is Pickle Prince. Is that what it is? Yeah, totally. So what's the story? I hear like so many bands in Seattle, especially Burn and you guys talk about pickles all the time. What's the story behind? Is this the pickleback thing? Is that what it is? Oh, no. I mean, that has no bearing on like my business's name at all. I mean, picklebacks, yeah. they are delicious and pickles in general are Pretty top notch, I'd say. It's funny because his name is Dylan. 
Yeah. And I hate being called Bill Bigley, so I was like, well, I'll just steer into it. And the pickle juice, there's a, there's a lot of fruit. It's heavy with a uh, vine gar, you know, so it, it prevents hangovers, man. Yeah. Yes, it does. Is that what it, I, dude, I have never had any, like, I don't even, like, so a pickleback, what is that? Is that like a beer and you get... Like a fucking pickle? What the fuck is this? Oh no, it's just yeah, a shot. Of, it's just a shot of liquor, and you chase her some pickle juice. And you just oh, it. okay. Okay. It's usually with whiskey, but yeah, I, it, to me, it's like the best chaser for whatever. Bourbon is definitely is. the best pair, man. Hell yeah! Do you have any uh, favorite pickles? What's your favorite pickle? It's Clausens. It's spicy. Yeah, it's super spicy Clausens. Those are hard to find. Also, have to be where's Bill at? He would know. Uh, I think Bill probably has a good pickle. knowledge yeah. of pickles. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got good. quite a few jars of pickles in the fridge right now. <laughs> yeah, those I like I the fucking. <laughs> I totally dig the Clausen ones though. Like I like the sandwich thin ones. Like the, I just fucking I'll just munch on and I'll fucking whole jar of those. Oh yeah, oh, well, yeah. slice yeah. or you know a good, a good little tour snack is those like hot Bahama Mamas. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. man, that'll wake you right up. <laughs> I like those hot chili peppers too. The little, the little yellow ones that are like oh, kind of like pepperoncinis. Yeah. They're kind of like pepperoncinis, but they're called chili peppers, and like in the same okay. brand, well, same jar. But they're well, like li- they're spicier. I like them. Oh, okay. I'll keep that in mind. I have to keep my eye out for that. I like them little red Thai bird chilies that we made our hot sauce with. Oh yeah, the liquid free hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. Plug that real quick. Unavailable at this time. Epcot hot sauce. Yeah, it hasn't exactly been FDA approved yet, so we're not distributing during the pandemic. So, uh, what do you guys? Uh, are you guys like listening to anything new lately, or what have you guys oh, been doing? Uh, uh, um, well, shout out to the guys in the head honcho. Your new record is really fucking good. Um, the Riverdale's like they're like a Ramones core band. Um, Sort of like a Ben Weasel side project. We kind of like lift the band up like the first record. Um, I'm trying to think like, like what else is like Dad Bod. Dad Bod's really cool. Yeah, Shout out to Dad Bod from Bremerton. Yeah, we've been getting we've been getting fucking pretty bent on the Ramones core lately. Yeah, one hundred percent. Teaching Kevin how to play bass, so you know, oh. watch out. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, what can you play, Kevin? What's that? What can you play? Oh, it's uh. Oh, uh, I'm I'm playing on a on a on a Thunderbird right now. Shout out to uh, you know, the play. Concho for bringing that over the other day. Oh yeah, yeah. Doug told me about that. Uh, he said he met up with you and gave you the bass. He yeah. Was like, yeah. He's like, I cleaned it up for him, and he's like, man, this thing looks really nice. <laughs> oh yeah, it's really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful instrument. Yeah, we we're listening to Riverdale's, and uh, Kevin's like, man, you know, I wish I could just like learn how to play bass and. You know, sort of like a Ramones core band with you, and I'm like, yeah, Why you can. <laughs> Why not? Ramones. So, are you, yeah, so Kevin, are you learn? Are you learning any cover songs, or what are you doing uh, to teach yourself? We're still like the bare, 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 bare bones process. We're just that. going straight to the writing. Yeah, we're going straight to the writing. Process. Oh, okay. We wrote a song yesterday called uh, "Fist Fight on Cinco de Mayo." It's about how <laughs> Kevin and I got in a fist fight. <laughs> I'll take it a mile this year. During, during quarantine, yeah. Pictures were high. Brother. That was awesome. <laughs> but, you know, uh, if, 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 if this whole COVID-19 thing has taught me is that, like, in this day and age, like, right now, if you're a musician, the world needs you now more than anything. You cannot kill rock and roll as much as, you, as, much as, you know, this shit's, like, trying to. <laughs> yeah, it seems like everybody's been super supportive more now than I've ever seen uh, recently with uh, just really trying to plug into what bands need because, uh, yeah, a lot of people, you know, they they don't go to shows a lot. Uh, they, you know, not always buying merch and, you know, donating the bands and stuff. And since COVID, I've seen more people engaging with their fans, more people like really like, you know, figuring out how to support each other and uh it's been really awesome to see even though it's been under these shitty circumstances uh it's been, it's been cool do you feel like uh the seattle hardcore scene is like pretty supportive in general like do you feel like you have like a pretty big scene up there 
Um, I feel like really. <laughs> well, with, 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 I don't know shit about Seattle hardcore, man, but I know about punk rock. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> I mean, like, I would say that with, with, within our like circle, it, it's it's interesting how Seattle works. It's that like, it's like all the different parts of town: Capitol Hill, University District, uh, Georgetown. Like they all have like their own like little like contingency like scenes out there. So it's like, you know, we. It's very rare when we get to like mix it up with with a lot of folks. So we, I mean, you know, we have, we have our crew like Land of Wolves and like the Bitter and people like that. But like we, within our own circle of friends, absolutely, we have we have a very tight knit group of people who are very supportive. Yes, one hundred percent. Gotcha. You probably wouldn't even consider yourself like a hardcore band. What, what would it, what would you class? Well, hardcore, like? hardcore hardcore band, but we're just in the punk scene, man. I mean, yeah. Seattle, Seattle hardcore is like something. I feel like the term different. hardcore has really come to mean like a lot of different things. Gotcha. You know, back, you know, the eighties, nineties. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, it's contemporary hardcore. I wouldn't say I feel like we're a contemporary hardcore band, but yeah, we I mean, are like yeah, a traditional hardcore shit. band. Yeah, I mean, yeah, from, from, from there you go. For from Black Flag to have heart to like something like Brace War to like mm. sheer terror. It's like it it's 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 all about the ethos and the ethics and the and the idea of like, you know, we're all misfits and we're all here in this place and we're just like pissed off. I mean, just because something is heavier doesn't mm. necessarily equate it to being more hardcore. Mm. Gotcha. What are uh, some of your guys' like influences when you guys are writing music? Like, what do you kind of lean towards when you're really trying? You want to start to... this one off, Dylan? What? That's the one that has a man. Wake up! Oh, I just feel so left out. I'm not over there with you guys. Um, I don't know. So, I listen to a lot of. Like 80s hardcore, obviously. I mean, that's some of our favorite bands, like Black Flag and you know Minor Threat, Descendants, stuff like that. But recently, I've been kind of getting more into like new school, like really fast paced hardcore music. Like, there's this band from Canada called Career Suicide. They're really good, and that's a pretty big influence for me as far as songwriting goes. I mean, I have to check them from out a, from a guitar perspective. That's at least. I'm coming from. Yeah, you got to check out the Pandemic EP or SARS EP. Oh, yeah. SARS, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're from like Toronto. Yeah, it's called the SARS EP. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Uh, I can have another one of your beers, <laughs> I think like I think vocally for me, like my my main influence is Jerry Aiken Poison Idea. Jerry Aiken Poison Idea and probably uh, Paul Bear from Sheer Terror. Kind of lean more towards just old school, like hardcore punk. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely lean more towards that. A little bit. I've been listening to like a lot of like uh, Gallows and Half Heart and Race War and you know new, newer mid two thousands hardcore. Trevor, I mostly just take a lot of inspiration from my friends, man. I don't know. Good answer. I like that. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of it's kind of run with it. I play different in every band I play in, so. Yeah. The been in, so, yeah. Are you guys uh, in any other side products? I know Dylan's in Street Jail, um, which I just Yo, saw. Yeah. I saw that video oh, recently, oh. and oh my god! Like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? That is so awesome. Cut! Cut! Yeah. <laughs> you have to cut this whole segment, Nick. I'm not in that band anymore. What? Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. You guys are, hey, this all, is there's all there's all kinds of stuff going on. So like, yeah. so burn is done now. Is that what's up, or are you guys gonna try to keep that going? This is off the record. I don't know. I don't know. I I didn't quit. That's all I know about that. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get all the drama out, guys. Trevor's in the best band in Washington. Generation declined. So Absolutely. I mean. They're still rocking, yeah, writing yeah. new shit, so we're stoked on that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'm getting ready to hit the studio. Uh, ready to hit the studio at the end of next month for a new album, so that'll be pretty good. Nice, dude. Yeah. 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 Who's recording it? Oh, Jesse, down in Tacoma. I oh, forget his last yeah. name. I feel like her real last The one. homie from <laughs> Noise. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Did the Jesse O'Donnell. Yeah. Is that that have fun the, burn record. I ah, gotcha. I want to say that's correct, but I can't. D is he the same guy that did the new Kids on Fire? I want to say. Or like, I think so. I'm pretty sure Jesse recorded that. Is that like the autopsy 
room yeah, or yeah, yeah. Or something. Yeah, that's Jesse O'Donnell. For, oh, yeah, there we go. From, uh, <laughs> that sounds good. Gotcha, nice. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I'm cool. Really yeah, good dude to work with. That guy's fun to record with for sure. Yeah. Well, fuck. Uh, I uh, yeah, I didn't mean to, you know, stir stir the pot there. I just. Uh, like, no, oh, oh, we, we live for yeah, some good pot stirring, kidding me? I, I feel fun. I, I just I on that got one. to plug the new record, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, you know, shit happens. You know, people. Oh, yeah. uh, it, yeah. There's all kinds of member changes all the time, so you know. Oh, yeah. Scooch up video is hilarious, though. Yeah, no, I I was like watching it just like. I, I I saw Drew have like a video like a long time ago of him like swallowing an egg or doing something yeah, with yeah. an egg, and I was just like, "What is this egg business?" And then when I saw the video, it all came together that like the egg is kind of part of the whole the like, shenanigans. It's yeah, awesome. yeah. Well, I ate one. Well, yeah, I ate one too. That was pretty. Well, quick free egg din din. Yeah, the little uh, street jail. Egg eating ritual. <laughs> Somebody doing laundry? What's that? What's the garage door? Oh. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Jeremy Hopkins. If you're if you're still over there in Europe, bud, we think about you. Hope you're doing okay, bud. I think he just got back. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so he's thinking about you. There we go. go. Yeah. All All right. Right. I'm really worried about that guy for a second. Hey, Jeremy, he made it back. <laughs> I think so. Welcome home, okay. Jeremy. Oh wait. <laughs> Damn it. So, uh, since certain. you guys have been a band, you guys have uh, done a couple tours together. Yeah. Um, you did one with uh, Anti Vision. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I heard you guys had some uh, some game, some terrible game. Why don't you uh, oh, tell King me? King of the Road. King of the Road. Yeah. Yeah. What's so this? it's it's just based off like the the same thing that like Thrasher Skate Magazine does, where like. The teams have like challenges and you know, there's like ridiculous point values attached to each of them and you compete while you're on tour. So uh, one one of the challenges is like get the the other band's logo tattooed on you. So that's a thousand points, got the little anti vision shout out Las Vegas little homies there. Uh oh yeah. You know, it would be like, oh, shock in a 211. Drink a whole 30 rack. Or uh -huh. eat your height in Slim Jims. Yeah, just like 150 points. Just or just dumb stupid stuff. shit yeah. like that. Uh, get a job on tour was a thousand points. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was mainly just crafted for the sake of uh, keeping myself entertained because I knew that you, and know, also, those, you know, those guys are young and impressionable and would yeah. do all the ridiculous stuff on the list that I wanted them to. But, you know, we're. Trying to big, trying to big down. Just, <laughs> try to show them they could keep keep up with the, with the old old dogs. Yeah, I mean, Epcot <laughs> won King of the Road yeah, we did. on that tour. It was, but yeah, it was like the, the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a very close race. Yeah, it was it was the King of the Road tour. It was pretty fun. You know, yeah, that tour was fun with Andy Vision. We actually uh, went and played a uh, Kai California. Shout out to, to the kids from uh, Fall Children. Uh, we uh, we went and played. We were supposed to play like a house show, and like by the time Anti Vision went on. It was like shut down by the time they were went into like the first song, so we ended up going and playing this open mic at Ukiah Brewery, <laughs> and uh, we were only able to play two songs, and we couldn't swear, <laughs> and we had to keep it like a certain amount, like decibels. Two and, songs. Uh, we had to not destroy the guy's jazz kit. Yeah, yeah, and, and Brett had to play on like their house kit, which is like basically oh, like a little man. kids like Hasbro kit. <laughs> it wasn't oh, a little kid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a little kid for you, man. Did you guys record this? Please tell me you have video. Yeah. <laughs> There's video of that flowing out somewhere. I know one of you anti vision kids out there has that. Reel it to the world one day. Stop waving your finger at the kids, Kevin. <laughs> kids. <laughs> Yeah, I love uh, Anti Vision. When when you guys came in for a session, I was so stoked to ice you guys. I was oh like, I oh. I was so fucking stoked. I like, I even made a little video to, uh, you know, kind of talk about it. Like after, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. like I did a little yeah, behind I just the scenes the other day. Very, very nice. Yeah, yeah I like, just stoked about icing myself, <laughs> dude. I like. So when I met Brett, like funny story, and I, I talked about this the other day because we keep, uh, I keep interviewing bands that we all know each other. And uh, 
somebody said hi to you guys the other day. I want to say it was maybe throw or somebody. Oh, they, they did a little shout out. Um, uh, oh. cause they, cause I told them I was going to be interviewing you guys. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I met Brett the night that I met Brett. I think Kevin and Brett were outside of the Hendo house and Kevin was icing Brett or vice versa. And, uh, and that's how I met Brett. Like we were li literally walking up, you know, and that's how like kind of like, I just, after I, a crack show. I'm pretty sure it was after a crack and show. Yeah. Cause like we, we played shows and shit, but like, I never really introduced myself because I'm kind of like an introvert, you know, like I'll play a show, but I won't really talk to anybody. But like oh, when I finally went and hung out at the Hendo house, like I, and so like, I think I've, Iced Burn 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 more than any other band. I think I even sent Burn some merch, and you were you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Opened a uh, opened yeah, one of the yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was when Drew was still living with us, and he uh, he sent like a it was the uh, it was like the Adam Frank shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I like woke up. The best Burn shirt of all. Yeah, I, like woke up, and I was like, Drew was like, "Oh, could you like help me like." Fully shirts. I was like, oh, cool, like whatever. I remember reaching in and just like feeling it. Yeah. And it was like hot and like warm. Oh. It was like the first thing in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> crossfire, brother. I forgot about that shirt. Shout out to Adam France. Yeah. What, what a guy. Cool guy. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Good Wally. His dog. Good Wally. Cool, oh, Wallace. But yeah, my, I, I don't know which uh, time that I iced you guys was my favorite because I always found clever ways. Like, I got uh, Scott Ramen one time by uh, trying to get them, trying to buy some merch. I was like, hey, dude, let me get a shirt. And he goes and like reaches into the, I totally put like, uh, you know, a Smirnoff in there. And when he went to go pull a shirt out, I iced him. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> our, our first tour that we did, uh, we did like two days in Vegas and uh, the, like the first day we played like this, like really cool like DIY venue out there. And uh, first, very first thing the anti oh. guys did was uh, ISIS as soon as we got out of the van. So that was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, that was good. Not in front of the guards. Clever, clever kids. Who's mm. mm. uh, so, uh, so we, we got I know. <laughs> <laughs> Too many ISIS. So, so, Dylan, uh, was it that you quit drinking a while back or a little bit ago? I was going to ask you what if you have any good ice stories, you know, cause like you've been in the band for a while. Uh, as far as the ices go, man, it's been a while since I've been here. You know, I don't really like the ice people. If I can't, you know, myself be iced. Oh, See, okay. thank you. Thank you. It's no but fun. I, remember, I, did get constantly ice gas. I think it was right before we were getting ready to play probably one of the last shows like down in the 20th and Hendo basement. And before we played, I had put like one of those nice 22 ounce Smirnoff ices, not the small ones, but the big yeah. one like, yeah. in my guitar case. And I was like, Oh, Kevin, you know, man, I forgot one of my little patch cords in my guitar case, you know, <laughs> classic. <laughs> and yes. then he just goes and be the like, nicest friend you can be like trying to help me out. And then yeah. he just, Ice. <laughs> like, I don't even know just start our set in like a sweaty, beer-covered <laughs> basement, and Kevin's just taking the ice as we're like playing like our intro music and stuff like that. It was pretty. Fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> that one was good. I really liked. Uh, uh, me personally, like the coldest I've ever gotten caught with the ice was like we were doing a, this show in Eugene at Campbell Club, and um, Phil had like bought like the six pack of like the little ones. And like some people came up to me like mid set and they're like, oh here, here's this is for you. And I was like, oh cool. And, like looked in and it was like six pack of, six oh. pack of ices. Oh Phil, he, yeah, he's he's a charity one. Yeah, shout out, to Mabel's 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 shout out to Mabel's Marbles. Yeah, Bill from shout out to Mabel's Marbles. Yeah, yeah, our yeah. roommate yeah. and Marbles. drummer of most awesome Mabel's Marbles band of all time. <laughs> Mabel Mabel's Marbles. I even uh, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, another fun one was, uh, I think uh, Dimple was playing for you guys uh, a while back on tour, and dude, I got him on the on stage at the Twilight because uh, I I was like, oh, check out my belt buckle, and I like had it just like shoved like right in the front of my pants. I was like, dude, you should check this out, and he sees it. 
Yeah, and he, yeah. and like, Hell yeah. I, made, I made him fucking chug that shit on stage. Yeah, check out Dimple's new band, uh, Boston Rock Guys. are pretty good. Yeah, I would like to say that I remember that icing, but uh, me and Bill and the big homie Joe Undum from the Savage Henry's were all down at the Rialto when we discovered that dollar <laughs> fifty Tall Boys and dollar fifty Well Drinks. So, yeah, that was a fun show, and we played the set backwards and didn't tell Drew. Oh, nice. <laughs> like you played all the songs in reverse order. Yeah, yeah, we all, we all, the whole band conspired against the lead singer. It, it happens. Uh, in every band. Yeah, you got to have fun sometimes or, you know, do what you, do what you got to do. Oh, yeah. I remember I jumped down the stairs of the Twilight and almost, well, racked my head on that little, uh, little Dude, fucking place where people set their You have almost there. killed yourself. I've witnessed it and yeah. I haven't even seen You're half there. the shows. I was there. I was like, holy fuck, man. That was so close. Well, my only memory of playing with Twilight is wild. like being on shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> being high as shit and just kept looking behind me. The I'm fucking like, the the suction suction behind me. Fucking other. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that was not good. Because they didn't hit me until we like, I like got out the van. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Pointing Lab Academy's on mushrooms right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Really so, good. uh... <laughs> so what's the what's the plan after COVID? Are you guys like planning to do another record? Because like your last one came out in what 2018. Yeah, yeah. we definitely plan on recording more. Uh, I think the only thing that we have like on the on the books right now is that we plan on doing a split with our with our buddies uh, Land of Wolves. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh yeah. I um I talked to them the other day and they were telling yeah. me about this. That's yeah, cool. shout out to those cats, Land of Wolves. Yeah. It's their roommate, Joel's band, and uh, their guitarist, Brian Fernandez. I've been friends with that dude for, like, most of my life, man. And uh, they're all super good dudes, really Absolutely. talented musicians. Yeah, so, Cody, we're, yeah, we're stuck down the street from us, them. Yeah. There's, like, yeah. a road dog. Like, as far as, like, the Seattle hardcore continue, like groups or whatever, like, we're, like, two peas in the pod. So, mm-hmm. it splits to be really cool. Yeah. yeah, all those guys are really rad. I, like... Um, I like what they're about, and uh, they seem like really good, straight up dudes. Um, and I met Brian before because he's also in Good Touch, and uh, yeah. so yeah. they yeah. they came in and did a session. And uh, so yeah, it's it's cool. Everybody, you know, it's a small small world, but it's you know it's really cool. All the different bands everybody's in. Uh, yeah, Washington punk rock is especially incestuous. Yeah, I feel like yeah. Do you guys have your songs already written for this split, or you guys have to kind of go back to the drawing yeah, board? I think we have like we have a couple more that are probably like in the can, and a couple more that we're working on. Yeah, we we we, we record we wrote a couple of my songs before everything yeah. got all locked down. So it's actually all just going to be uh, covers. All of them. All yeah. of them. All throw covers. Misfits. <laughs> <laughs> So are any, any of you guys working now, or are you guys just all kind of staying oh, yeah. home? Definitely yeah, didn't start a copper stripping business during <laughs> the pandemic, so Definitely the did. answer is no. Yeah, not at all. There's not a lot of catalytic converters still attached to cars in this neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no. think, yeah, I think Trevor's like the only one out of this that's like gone yeah. back to work. I mean, I work at like a music venue, so who knows when that's ever going to like come back if, if at all um yeah i mean brett does like service industry bar management stuff um, mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm 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 fine without going back to bartending for a little while yeah it's so, good yeah. like mental health for like i feel like not dealing with the general public is doing wonders for, for my sanity right yeah. now seriously <laughs> are there like yeah. uh pr- projects and stuff that you're getting yourself into that you kind of been putting off now that you have all this downtime oh 100 absolutely like, like, you know, lear- learning learning an instrument, trying to, like, just, like, write new music in the meantime, while mm-hmm. Epcon's, like, trying to, like, sort out what, what we're going to do in the meantime. Yeah, you're streaming video games, too, Kevin. You're going to be the yeah, next... Yeah, I do, I do. I did that one time. I might, like, bring it back just a little bit. It, it was... They kind of zucked me because I, I, was, I, I was trying to... Uh, I was trying to, like, play, like, local bands at the same time, but Facebook uh, doesn't like that shit at all. Uh, so they just, like, muted all that shit, so... We'll have to come mm. up with some other way to do that. Yeah, that's a bummer. It yeah. sucks how you have all these regulations. Like, 
if uh, you do something and it triggers like the uh, the database for like the copywritten music or whatever, then yeah, it'll like, like ding. I know that like the band is. They cool tried to it. do that with us. Like, yeah, they tried to do that with us when we uh, we used to book shows in a place in Burien called uh, the Black Zia Cantina. We used to we used to just like play mm -hmm. like our homies bands like in between like bands or whatever, and then they were tried to say like the ASCAP or whatever the fuck you call it. They like, they like try to come in and say, and say <laughs> that, that all, all that stuff. Cab, yeah. Oh, I thought it was yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, they just gave all those fake soup motherfuckers a stupid sounding name to introduce themselves. Yeah, they're like, you can't play this music, it's like copyrighted, but it's like, no, these are like all like friends of ours, I mean, they aren't like on labels or any of that shit, so it's like, I don't understand why you're like... They're not defending artists, they're just trying to make a fucking dollar. For sure, yeah. For Scam. Sure. Scam. <laughs> What about you, Dylan? What do you what have you uh, <laughs> been getting into uh, with your downtime? Are you working on anything like around the house? Any fun new projects or anything? Well, I mean, we just got an espresso machine over at my place, and uh, so I think the first day that we were using it, I think I had something like ten shots or something <laughs> like that of espresso, and. Um, and I'm not really caffeine sensitive most of the time, but most of the time. I feel like I was having heart palpitations by the end of the day. And yeah. then me and my girlfriend and you, uh, and ride around all those new and, on our bikes and it was terrible. Well, it wasn't terrible, but I felt like I was going to die. Like a lot. So funny. you've developed a new coffee addiction uh, in quarantine. No, no, not new. Don't call it addiction. <laughs> not, not new. Build it's a comeback. <laughs> Just re re exploring <laughs> his, his his love for, for coffee and espresso and coffee related things. Espresso is just amazing, guys. I think I'll have another after this Zoom call. Yeah, I uh, I'm getting I got about half a cup, so I, I'm still good for a minute. <laughs> so um. So do you do mainly like shirts and hoodies uh, or like what else have you been getting into as far as like printing like in the last, you know, the last year or so? You want to get technical with it? Get technical. I switched up the emulsion I'm using, man. Some like, uh, so like I use uh, some Ulano stuff that's like mm -hmm. meant for like plastic salt and water base. Okay. So A hybrid. To get into like doing like uh, poster printing and stuff like that. Cool. But I might have to get bigger palettes for my press if I want to do that. Like Just trying big. to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've done some poster work, and the times that I've used, like, multicolor water-based ink, uh, I use just, like, this old-school tabletop thing yeah. where you just lock in the, you know, one frame at a time, and you do all the colors, and then you kind of, like, line it up. And then it's uh, probably not the way that I would have – wanted to do it but my first time doing it i used a, a friend's help to just kind of get me get me yep. going with it but it turned out really cool i did some posters for red city radio nice and, dude. Um, and i did some for the bomb pops and uh yeah that's pretty cool oh yeah i just oh, think it's cool. cool like i don't know sure. posters yeah um so one other thing that i i started doing is uh you know those like uh, painters canvases. Like some of them have the the wood frame, and they're kind of like stretch canvases. Um, or you can get the flat ones that are like just completely flat. Um, I started printing on those um, because I figured that would be cool to like have some art to hang on the wall. And uh, that was like one new thing that I, like I started doing. Um, just kind of do something new. Uh, but yeah in the printing world it's just like you know just hats shirts hoodies mm -hmm. you know. trying to figure out hats i don't want to have to get like a separate like attachment for my press to have to do that you know so maybe like just get like a just make some transfers or something and then just press them or something like that yeah i did um an order with transfers recently and i think that is the best way to do it because the when you're printing on a trucker hat, that like cushion of foam, so hard to get like consistent yeah. prints on that. I feel um, like you have to like 
fucking bend the hat all fucking weird ways and shit to get in. Yeah, there. I've got this fucking hat. It's called a hat champ, and you put it on the press. It's okay, but uh, my recent thing, if you can see these, um, nice. I have these uh, woven patches that oh, nice. I just put on, you know, like truckers. This one's a flex fit, but uh, I have these uh, woven patches that I got. And, it's uh, like embroidered or what? Uh, woven is like a finer stitching than embroidery because uh, – with embroidery, sometimes if you're trying to get really like these really small detailed letters and stuff, yeah. uh, I tried this with embroidery and it could, wouldn't look clean. You have to like blow it up big. So with woven, yeah. you can get like really high detailed stuff. Uh, so I got a bunch of these hats and uh, just the patches themselves too. Nice, so, dude. Yeah. Now I know that um, that you are technically interviewing us, but screen printing question for you, Nick. Yeah. And also, Dylan, uh, merchandise idea, is it possible to screen print on condoms? Uh, like the wrappers or the condoms? The condoms themselves, I don't think that would be very, like, sanitary because that would just be, oh, like... That wouldn't get used anyway. Okay. <laughs> I would say the wrapper for sure. Um, you know, like, obviously you'd have... Uh, if, you know, the condoms in the wrapper, you have to, like, deal with the indents and it not being a flat surface, but it it'd can be a pain in the ass. You could probably do it though. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's like, it would just be like one of you guys, like opening <laughs> them all up and like, you know, printing on them and repackaging them. Like you guys are good, right? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Send me some condoms. I'll fucking print them bitches. Right. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to wait until uh DSHS <laughs> reopens his doors and I go steal another handful. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I guess it's not stealing if they're free. Well, stealing sounds more. That was a great question, though, Brett. Uh, I'm really glad you asked. Top shelf question. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, guys. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, let you guys you know, give a plug to uh, any of your merch or uh, your links or anything where people can find your stuff. And, uh, yeah, go Thank ahead you. and... Bandcamp? Is that where you guys are hosting all your stuff? Yeah, Fcon26.bandcamp.com. And Instagram at uh, Fcon26. Nope, wrong. Fcon yep. underscore official is the Instagram title. Oh, oh yeah, we gotta like figure out a way to nuke that other account. Whoops, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to nuke it. <laughs> So there's some unsavory images on there. No, there's not. Well, now people are going to look at us. So, <laughs> it's, all, it's all up there. Uh, Dylan, nuke it. <laughs> right on. So uh, everybody can find uh, any of your merch. Is that where you host your merch, too? Yeah, your, your merch. Uh, T-shirts. Record and all that. Yeah, it's on our band camp. We're also on, like, yeah. all, as far as the music goes, we're on all platforms. Apple Music, uh, Google, Google Music, uh, Spotify, all that. Right on. And, you know, and, we have like music videos, Bridge City Sessions, all kinds of videos on YouTube. Just look up Epcon Band and it'll like pop up there. Bridge City Sessions videos. There's an I, exclusive song that I don't, it's like not even recorded yet that we yeah, did for uh, one of our song sessions. Song have on record. It's only exclusively on Bridge City Sessions. I hear it. Yeah. Exclusive. Hell yeah. I'll put it in the description when we release this. And when we release this, we're going to repost your sessions with it. So, oh, so that way. Yeah, we got you know, Pretty sweet music video filmed up the Kraken, so you know, I just want to give a little Kraken. shout out to the Kraken, Will, Life Dan, Cat, Drew, Skyler, Skyler, all them guys, man, they, uh, you know, that's pretty much like home away our home away from home, it's the only place I'm ever north of downtown. And I didn't catch that, so uh, we, you, you guys know, did a music video from the, from, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's for, uh, it's for the song, No Guts, No Glory. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a parody of the heck yes video for, uh, uh, God, um, God, God, or Jesus gave it, Jesus died for your sins. So you can, so you can party or whatever. What's, what's the name of the video? Jesus gave up his weekend for your sins. Yeah, there you go. That's why we keep you around. Don't who, so who, who recorded that for you? Uh, Brian Lewis, uh, for oh, us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So that was all primarily at the Kraken. Yeah, totally. That was it must have been so long ago that we made that video. But so the premise is like Heck yes had a video where 
it's a really short song and the whole video is just them drinking a milkshake at a table together oh yeah i've seen this yeah and so for our version we just did the same thing except with a pitcher that we made will fill with mickey's grenades mm. you know i think i might have seen this now i just like i didn't remember it when you yeah it's, it's all this like sitting at a table like drinking out of it Drinking out of Did this picture. come out in like 2018 or like? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It was in support. We released yeah. like in support of our first uh, tour, first little West Coast run. Um, yeah. Gotcha. You guys, that, Will. You threw a, a record release party at the Kraken too. We did. Yeah, we did. I mean, it's just like where else would we want to do that? You know, yeah. Kraken has always been so nice to us. We love everyone there. Yeah. Are are there any new venues in Seattle that are starting to kind of pop up? Obviously, not now, right? This at this yeah. time, but like, there's yeah, we started, a, yeah. We yeah. started a, a little thing over at this little uh, Mexican corny, corner store down in White Center, <laughs> corny store, <laughs> and uh, called the yeah, it's, it's called the Source, man. It's it's it, the the store is called Beer and Wine Stores, and you kind of like. Uh, Started booking some shows there. It's all ages, all the time. You know, they serve beers, and you can, you know, buy it right out of the cooler there and crack it inside the store. It's, you know, build a new stage, new yeah. sound system, like pretty much like yeah, revamp this convenience mart into shout out to full blown uh, venue. So yeah, RC Locos, that's the new guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah those, AB, all those guys. Those, those guys down at the stores. That's that's our White Center family, and uh, they got a really cool thing going on. There's not really uh any all ages venues like that yeah. in the city. Anymore. And also a uh, shout out to uh, another, another cool venue that popped up in the last like, couple of years, Belltown Yacht Club, mm -hmm. uh, located at the Screwdriver Bar down in Belltown. In yeah, those guys basement. Well. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. They have really cool like CBD cocktails, like cool mm -hmm. underground, like it's literally like an underground bar. spot. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. No windows. Like, the bar is like set up to where you like pretty much like have to watch the band. So it's, yeah. it's cool. There's nice <laughs> and Liam's a great door guy. <laughs> what is that on your shirt, Dylan? I like the colors in that. I like. Oh, you like this? Mangy, mangy, mangy. Oh yeah, oh, they yeah. they were booked uh, to do a session prior to the COVID thing, and obviously we had to cancel. Um, They're really a very, fun. very good band. Yeah, a I lot of people have been them. talking about them. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, like Throw was talking about them. Uh, a lot of people are digging them. I haven't seen them yet. So I met the guys from Thoreau's that they came up here and they played a show with uh, me and yeah. Lucas Orderlies, I believe. Hmm. Yeah. Right on. Well, man, it was really good having you guys and uh, catching up. Uh, it's been a while. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to when this is all over, we can, you know, finally hang out and maybe book another session, you know, oh, just yeah. uh you know, get back to normal life and, you know, being able to hug each other. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll be I'm ready for it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to, uh, be on this uh, zoom call with me. Thank you. Uh, Hell yeah. Nick. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks oh, for yeah. having us, man. Yeah. We'll be in touch soon. And, uh, yeah, we'll be releasing, uh, the sessions that you did. Um, before and uh yeah we'll be in touch about that so sounds good man all right well you guys be safe be safe have fun take care and uh we'll talk soon all right absolutely yeah, man. thank you brother love you all love you guys bye dylan stay sane love you hi bye dylan wait no i don't my breath <laughs> <laughs> all right bye guys okay.